Sean, uh, Sean Fleming is the Vice President of the Business Development Worldwide for M Formation. He is responsible for all of M Formation's strate strategic alliances, channel partners, and o OEM relationship. He has previously served in various roles within M Formation, including solution sales, pre sales, professional services, and customer support. Since joining M Formation in 2004, Sean has proven track record in building world class pre sales and services teams, as well as deep customer relationships through strong pre sales and post sales support. Prior to information, Sean was a management consultant in the communication and media industry sectors of IBM, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and Anderson Consulting, now Accenture. Sean has led implementation teams for various Fortune 500 companies. Sean holds a BS in Electrical Engineering from the University of Delaware and is also an EIT registered in Delaware. So thank you very much, Sean, for accepting uh, the opportunity to present, uh, and uh, it's your turn now. Thank you, Francisco, and uh, thank you to the uh, OMA body for allowing our information to participate. We appreciate it. You can go on to the next slide. And I think you just might have skipped one. Uh, previous, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, I'll jump in. This will be pretty uh, quick. Uh, information has a, a broad solution for device management, ranging from the simple endpoints to the complex. We've been uh, involved in device management since our inception in 1999. We are a private company. Um, we've made various direct and indirect contributions to the standard and able to help propel it and gain faster uh, market acceptance. We have a solution that's been designed to be multi-tenanted and headless. And while the solution is standards compliant, it also has been hardened after more than a decade of tier one carrier installations around the world. It's also been benchmarked to process millions of transactions uh, per day with live traffic. Um, information has a highly scalable, you can stand the slide, thank you, has a highly scalable, uh, you can go back actually. Information has a highly scalable cloud solution for M-to-M uh, -M device management. It can easily serve multiple industry verticals from automotive to the digital home. It leverages the OMA standards, and I think we heard just before about some of the various management objects uh, that can be used uh, as a base protocol for communication, but it also has numerous layers of business logic, automation, web services, reporting, to support additional use cases and value to our customers. The server can diagnose, configure, and update devices uh, directly or indirectly as when it gets to what we call area network management. Next slide, please. Um, and I think we might have skipped the slide here, but uh, if you could just advance, I just don't see the, uh, the slide that was expected here, Francisco. Oh, you can go back. Well, the OMA standard is rapidly becoming quite pervasive in this uh, industry sector, uh, due in part to the evangelism and success in adjacent uh, telecommunication markets uh, around phones and tablets and CPEs are over a billion devices using FUMA, FUMA alone, the uh, firmware update management object that we were just discussing in the prior presentation. And while that has historically been very important in the past, other standards are now evolving. SCOMO, Diagmon, DCMO uh, are now evolving to enable broader lifecycle management 
for complex software com components on devices, including application management, security patches, the radio modem software updates, and configuration management. OMA-DM has gained the level of acceptance in the automotive environment. The uh, head units, as you've seen in some of the other presentations, are now becoming OMA-DM capable. The standard's always expanding, and a capable lab environment or partner can enable rapid activation of new management objects and capabilities. And this all allows for DM to solve the key issues for today and tomorrow from the vehicle head unit to wearable devices. Next slide. So we see that before everything and from our perspective was uh, on the phone and this is a simpler environment and now with the explosion of various connected devices, especially the automobile, the complexity has exponentially grown. The automotive sector is one of the key users of M to M systems with a typical car potentially using hundreds of different software driven components. Now not all of these are critical uh, today, but it's expected that over time the criticality of those systems will increase. Some of them will be critical insofar as a consumer will be accustomed to their operation and usage to the extent that their absence will make that person feel uncomfortable. And this is similar to mobile phones today. It's anticipated that the car will augment the view of the driver with navigation, environmental information, and entertainment. Additionally, the bidirectional communication in the car will be voice recognition and synthetic speech. This reliance on this augmented reality will increase over time as more systems are added into the mix. And the car manufacturers are also going to use this standard and use the server to pull back performance information on their components independent of the consumer so they can continuously improve on them and obviously improve on the experience of the end consumer. Next slide. The number of critical systems in the car is expected to increase. These systems will typically be designated as business critical, safety critical, and security critical. Business critical refers to things such as automatic toll payment, pay-as-you-drive insurance, and automated parking payment. Pay-as-you-drive is particularly critical for the consumer as it may not be possible to use the car unless this is activated. Now, there's a need for improved efficiency and time management. For many, the vehicles, the mobile office for appointments and meetings, etc. The prosumer and the consumer will need the continuity of information from the fixed office to the vehicle, from the mobile to the vehicle. And competitive advantage is going to be held by those with faster access to the information grid. To ensure this, the automotive environment must be constantly and correctly maintained. The appropriate in timely configuration, application, and firmware provides and enables this business edge. However, it's not solely the OMA standards that enable this, but the intelligence of the platform to take numerous factors or variables into consideration, from software attributes and dependencies to other priorities. The safety critical systems are automated 911 services like the emergency call that was discussed, I think, in the first presentation, and uh, E911. Uh, other safety critical systems, braking management systems, autonomous driving and collision detection, and plus many others, some of which may not appear safety critical at first glance. For example, the automatic seat adjuster, but in operation while uh, in a driving mode sheet certainly is a, a safety critical item. So not only are these safety critical, not only are these systems critical from a safety perspective to the consumer, they're also business critical to the manufacturer, who's going to be liable for a fit for a failure and want to avoid costly recalls. The safety criticality was not always present, especially in the mobile phone environment, keeping the vehicle up to date with the latest updates from temperature modules and navigation systems can potentially save lives. The determination of the right software components for the right module at the right time and sequence are decision points where that were not previously over the air managed or available. And this can be applied to safety devices, child monitoring systems, and various other components in a connected home. All the OMA standards that may have had a bit more limited uh, rollout success in mobile 
will now be more required and at the forefront in telematics. And I'm referring to uh, SCOMO, uh, the software component, Management Object, and uh, DCMO, and so forth. Security critical systems are items such as biometric car locking, anti-hijacking, and vehicle location. And these may be critical insofar as consumer will not want to use the car if they're not functioning effectively. All these systems, just like the mobile phone today, will need managing. And the more critical they are, the more they'll need that management. The huge number of different and varying components makes the management of them and their interdependencies a challenge in and of itself. So now this is the time for augmented reality where this virtual world and our physical world are obviously coming together and machine-to-machine -machine communications are facilitating our convenience. Instead of carrying around the world on a device, we have devices throughout our world. They're everywhere. They're in our vehicles. They're in our phones, uh, in our homes. They're monitoring our vehicle's tire pressure. They're tracking our driving habits. They're uniquely and personally connecting us to the people and places and things that are reality from virtually anywhere. But the devices that do this augmentation are not necessarily smart. The sensors in our cars from for seat belts and locks and brakes are simple, fit-for-purpose devices. The intelligence in our connected world ultimately comes from the way we manage it. Next slide. Thank you very much. And my name is Sean Fleming. I can be reached at sean.fleming at information.com for any questions. Thank you, thank you very much, Sean. So I will open the floor for a couple of questions. Please write your question and also indicate uh, if the question is for a specific speaker. If Kenny Kenny Kwong, uh, uh, if I remember well, you you raised your hand for a question. Do you still have uh, your question? or is somehow answered from the presentation. Okay, Kenny, you are muted. You should unmute yourself. Okay, uh, you can hear me, I can see that. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Francesco. I, my question was a simple one uh, to the first speaker. Uh, I guess that was perhaps uh, looking at a very large uh, landscape for introduction, uh, because I, didn't, I was going to ask whether there had been any, uh, or will be any particular, uh, you know, issues, identification, uh, issue of, you know, being uh, identified for further dialogue and, and uh, investigation uh, with OMA. Whether, uh, whether that was just uh, kind of uh, describing the landscape to the OMA audience. So your question is for Russell. Let me open the microphone for Russell. Russell. Okay. Um, these were the views. Um, that I put together from the ITU um, collaboration and ITS communication standards where um, the participants from both the car companies and some of the carriers are very concerned about how really things get put together. Um, 
a number of them have participated in the GSMA um, automotive effort, um, which has concluded um, with some testing and some ideas. Um, and there's kind of a general belief that um, a serious cooperative effort needs to be moved forward, particularly as um, automated driving is um, on a reasonably close in horizon now. But we're not saying, um, and I don't think it's our position, we certainly would like to be part of an effort, but we're not the ones to decide where the effort should be. It primarily has to come from the carriers. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is um, one question from Seth, then we will have a question from Lawrence Doe, and finally a question from Gelson. And that's it. Seth, I uh, will open your microphone so you can directly answer, sorry, you can directly uh, ask your question. Okay, Seth, your microphone is open. Thank you. Uh, this is questions either for uh, Sean or Yoram because your your con your presentations and your products concentrate a lot on existing OMA DM. Um, you know their implementations of the existing specification. As you're looking ahead, do you see things that should be changed or added or uh, incorporated into the OMA DM spec or, or, or others for that matter? Um, uh, specifically to serve the automotive market. Thank you. Hi, <clears throat> Hi this is Sean. I, I'll go first and then I'll, I'll turn it over to my uh, colleague, Yoram. Um, I, I certainly would think so. I think there is, and please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, I, I think there is uh, an additional need for the associated metadata uh, around SCOMO and the uh, or even perhaps on, on FOTA as well, because it's just a, a significant increase of parameters and variables and attributes which make these kinds of software updates and managing, uh, pushing them out a lot more complex than I think in the historical kind of single device phone or tablet uh, market. So I think uh, taking in these uh, additional attributes uh, with the device will be more conducive specifically in the automotive piece, because I think there's a numerous uh, uh, dependencies, and those dependencies are based on a wide range of additional factors that previously were more simplified. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one question from uh, Gelson. Uh, I will read the, the question. This question is for KDDI, so for Kawada, Mr. Kawada, uh, about the KDDI approach. In the KDDI demo, is connectivity also done through the smartphone also as opposed to the embedded SIM approach described by Russell? Ryoki, I will open your microphone. Ryoki, did you get the yeah. question? Okay. Do you um. want yeah, would you please uh, uh, repeat the question again? Yes. In your demo, in KDDI mm -hmm. demo, is connectivity also done through the smartphone or opposed to the embedded SIM approach described by Russell? So Russell's, Russell in his presentation uh, talked about uh, an embedded SIM approach. In your mm -hmm. demo, your demo, the, the understanding is that connectivity is done through the smartphone. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, understanding right. correct? Is it right? Yeah, it is correct. So the uh, in, in our demo, uh, the uh, IVI 
has uh, is supposed to have only the Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The last uh, uh, question is a question already done to to Joel, but. Uh, probably if someone else want to answer is the question uh, what about the allocation of spectrum is there a room for a massive network that is using such a large amount of frequency through LTE will it disturb other outside communication with aren't in vehicle so who would like to answer this question maybe I can take a uh, stab at it this is Daniel. we've done quite a bit of work with uh, on the mobile side with regards to spectrum optimization and network optimization uh, and so I think you can never have enough spectrum especially with all the demands of the current connected devices and you add on automotive as well as the rest of the MM world uh, so there definitely needs to be some optimization. You know, I think uh, sharing that between uh, licensed and unlicensed spectrum is one approach. I think that has some merit. We've uh, we've seen some interest around that, especially in the M to M spaces where uh, some customers are particularly sensitive to pricing of the cellular plan. So I think in those cases, uh, if you can use uh, the combination of both, especially on the heavy content media using of caching and things like that will help mm -hmm. to alleviate that. I, I definitely think we're going to continue to run into this problem going forward, but, uh, uh, you know, I think there are solutions that uh, will help to alleviate some of that that we, we've seen in practice and that can certainly be um, adapted. Okay. Thank you very much. This was the last question. Uh, I think we had a very interesting, uh, productive uh, uh, webinar. Uh,